What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Let's start off with the scripture. Um, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to tell us and to help us and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. So, you know, I just wanted, I had a thought like, you know, um, the law, when we, when we look at the old Testament, we can apply that this, this, the old Testament is useful to help us and teach us what is right and wrong. Now, when anyone mentions the law, we don't obey the law in the fact that we put our faith in Jesus Christ to take away our sins and to save us and to give us salvation. But the law helps us to know what is right and what's wrong. So the Bible, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says that all scripture is useful. So every word of God, every word of God in the scripture is useful. Sometimes I I think about that and it's like, oh, I want to avoid Leviticus or Numbers or Deuteronomy. And I think when we get to those scriptures, we have a mindset in such a way that we're reading it to learn more about God and how he operates in. And we uphold the law, you know, but we don't necessarily try to follow the law in that, you know, we don't have to wear something on our forehead or it's okay if we shave our beards or, uh, you know, if you want to get a tattoo, you know, you can get a tattoo. Uh, To my understanding, that's what the law is is useful to do is, you know, it's, it's, it, if you feel convicted though, like, oh, I shouldn't get a tattoo because, you know, it says that you shouldn't mark yourself. If you feel like you shouldn't, then I probably wouldn't, you know, I probably wouldn't. It's, it's getting a tattoo is not something that's a huge big deal that, you know, if it, if you feel like you shouldn't do it and you go ahead and do it, then the Bible calls that sin. And, and so, you know, even though we don't sacrifice animals anymore, when you read it, it, uh, it helps you to know that how Jesus became a sacrifice for us and his blood shed took away our sins. So I wanted to kind of mention, you know, what is what are some uses of the Old Testament? And I think Second Timothy three sixteen again, uh, really plays that out is like, you know, we use the Old Testament to learn about who God is. And, you know, when I was thinking about, you know, kind of the Old Testament. I think when I was reading the Old Testament and I was reading specifically some of the laws of God, I was reading it in order to put it into practice. And I I think there's a fine line between, you know, putting your faith in Jesus And, you know, uh, trying to obey the law. Now, from my understanding, you know, the moral laws are still something that you should follow. You know, like, it's obvious, like, you know, um, you know, there's certain things uh, that are immoral or immoral. you know, there's certain things that, you know, I actually 
discovered what was right and what was wrong from looking at the law, but it wasn't necessarily, it's, we don't put our faith in the law in order to take away our sins. You know, the actually, actually, when you look in the law, the Bible says that the strength of sin is the law, meaning that when you hear don't covet, it awakens something in you and you start to have those desires of wanting what other people have because you want at one time you didn't really know it was wrong and so it didn't necessarily mean anything to you but once you knew it was wrong it was kind of like it it started to really uh bring more strength to doing coveting or coveting and so you know i i've been talking about this for a few weeks now but you know i found strength i found more freedom from bad habits when when i started to confess to the lord and to other people i really started to tell other people what i'm going through and i think you know just being an adult like i think one way to grow up is you're more open about the things that you're going through i think when you're a kid or you're a teenager you kind of have this secrecy about yourself and you have this mystery about yourself uh which mystery isn't necessarily a bad thing but um we have to talk to other people and let them know you know, hey, what's going on? You know, what's what's happening? So, you know, I think um, I thought that was helpful is that, you know, I made a video about some things that are uh, I've made specific videos about how I found, uh, you know, freedom from a bad habit. And um i think one of one of those things is just accepting that something is wrong and i think when we look at the new testament we we see a lot of things described that are in the old testament but i think once i really just accepted like okay i am in the wrong or you know some bad habit is not actually good for me you know that is when I really just had my different mindset and I was like, okay, let me not do that anymore. But I think when you have a mindset of like, oh, what I'm doing is not bad or you're kind of complacent and you're like, oh, I don't need to change. You know, I'm good where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of good where I'm, how I'm living. Like I'm kind of okay with the things that are going on. That could be you. But for me, uh, I think I was like that, too. I, and I, I think also preventative, preventing sin. I think that is one thing that I, w- I really want, you know, the Lord to help me with is I feel like I kind of let my guard down a little bit. And I was like living my Christian life and things were going pretty well, you know, for the most part. I feel like my life had gotten kind of rocky, but it kind of smoothed out a little bit. And then as soon as I kind of like got kind of I I would say complacent almost, just kind of comfortable with how I was living and I stopped going to uh certain groups, you know, certain like Bible study or, you know, I didn't really have Bible study that I was, I was going to Bible study, but I mean like some smaller groups like, uh, like celebrate recovery where you're actually working, where you're actually talking about problems. Bible study is different because you're studying the Bible, but groups like celebrate recovery and i just found out that they have groups that you can go for your marriage 
you can actually get into a group that uh, talks about marital problems and uh, you get to share about how your marriage is going. You know, I re- just found out that they have those type groups. I never really thought about it. And there's probably so much out there that, you know, is going on that we, you know, uh, haven't really gotten connected to. But anyway, when I kept going to those meetings, I found strength. But when I was going to those, excuse me, when I was going to those meetings, what happened to me was like, I, these thoughts started to creep in my head about, oh, I don't need to go anymore. You know, like thoughts started to kind of say to me, like my brain started to say to me, like, you know, oh, you're kind of good. You're, you're okay. You're doing good. You know, you can stop going to meetings. You can, you can stop, uh, you know, going to celebrate recovery. Like you're already good, you know? And those type thoughts are so kind of, you have to watch out for those because it's kind of like reaching a plateau almost. And I feel like with God, for now at least, we I don't, I can't really speak too much about after we go to heaven and whatnot. But for now, it seems like we're on a constant journey and we have to always be working on bettering ourselves, I think if you're not talking with people about things that are going on in your life, you know, if you are kind of quiet, you're kind of isolating yourself and you know that you have a bad habit that you're going through, but you're not talking to anybody or, you know, that's a bad place, you know? And I think for me, I was in a, I was, I picked up a bad habit again, but it was like I wasn't really hearing anybody like some of the mentors that I have in my life were kind of like, hey, what's going on with you? You know, and at that time I was like kind of just like, oh, nothing, you know, but there's also moments where I was reaching out to someone, you know, and I was like telling them kind of like I it was I wasn't really talking to that specific mentor but I was talking to another counselor. I was talking to a counselor and I was kind of expressing like, Hey, I'm going through this, you know, what should I do? You know? And so it's, it's interesting, but I think when you start, I think the bottom line is not worrying. I think if you tell God, you know, God cares, he hears us, he's right here. And I think if you tell God, you know, if you tell God what's on your mind and on your heart and that you want to change, I'm sure God has so many people that have changed from one place to another. I remember when I was younger, there used to be this lie out there like, oh, people don't change. And that's such a huge lie. The whole Christian faith is about changing. That's that's like what being a that's like the foundation of being a Christian is changing from one bad state to a better bad, a better state, not a better bad state, but a better place. And so it's totally possible. You can change, you know, you have, God has given you the ability to break a bad habit, you know, and I think you might just need to look up people who have broken a bad habit Um, I would look, I've looked up testimonies from people who have, you know, stopped doing a certain thing and, you know, there's people out there who are successful. I mean, I remember seeing, I remember hearing about a pastor that my family used to go to, uh, the church and he was like, yeah, me and my wife, we don't even argue. And now when I think back on that, I, for some reason that really stuck with me. (laughs) I really remember, and I haven't really even sat down with this pastor. I've only shared, like, I can probably count on both hands how many times I've talked to him. And for some reason that really stuck out to me. He's like, 
you know, me and my wife don't argue. And that really lets you know that, you know, you don't have to argue. You know, if people, if you if you are a type of person that you're getting irritated at someone, you know, you need to bring that to the Lord. You know, you need to tell the Lord, like, what's going on and you need to tell him everything you know everything that you can think of and god will do something about it so i have good hope for my life i think that god is going to do something good in my life because i think that's just what he does you know and he's able to turn something bad into something good so i I think that is the same for you, too. You know, if you're out there and you want to be a Christian, your life is going to get better. You know, the Christian life, God says that, you know, he came to give us an abundant life. Now, I think one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is patience. So for me, I may not be where I necessarily feel like is my plateau of life you know I may not be there yet but I have to uh, contentment is another quality of a Christian is you know I think sometimes when we have all these desires within us like oh I want another car or I want a car and you just refuse to go anywhere without a car, you know, you don't travel on your own, you know, you don't go ahead and take the bus, you just like, you know, oh, I just, I have to have a car, like, I'm not going to go anywhere without a car, you know, that's kind of like you're being bitter, and you're just, you're not really content with where you're at, and I think that's, that's for me, I'm not saying I'm not content, I'm not saying I'm there yet, but you know, I sort of want to be there where I'm not always wanting something, you know, and like I there's and it's hard because I feel like there's things in my life that I really want changed. And so it's it's hard, you know, but, you know, I, I think I definitely want a breakthrough in my family life. You know, I, I my family is kind of in turmoil right now and my personal life is kind of in turmoil right now but slowly and surely you know there's little things that are happening that are good and so you know I think you know just trying to be content and just be like you know, God, I'm laying my heart before you. There's things that I want, but I realize that I probably can't have those things right now. And so, you know, God, help me to be patient or help me to trust you in this moment. So something like that. So it's difficult. You know, I think it's true that what the Bible says that you know, the way of Jesus is difficult. It may not be clearly, you may not clearly see how it's difficult right now, but it is because the easier way, the easier way is like, oh, I'm going to just drink my life away and not have any pain, or I'm just going to not care about anybody. And I'm not going to care about God and what he wants. I'm just going to, you know, do all these bad things and enjoy my life. And the Christian life, it requires you to deny yourself. And so you're you are having to deny all these things that you believe you used to believe are fun or you used to believe that are going to give you most joy, you know, and there's things that are waging war against our what. what Jesus wants for us, what the spirit of God wants for us. So that's what, that's one of the reasons why it makes the Christian life so difficult is because we have this war within us that, you know, no, I can't do certain things. You know, I, I have to deny myself. So you get the idea. 
And there's other things that make it challenging, like pe- other people who don't like Christians. You know, it's like, wow, they are really just out to get us, you know. But God has a plan, you know. Uh, sometimes it seems like, man, this thing, it just keeps going, you know. And it's like, when is when is Jesus going to come back, you know. When is this, this you know, sad story going to end? And... I think that's one of the difficulties for me is like, you know, you kind of have this thought of like, dude, when, why does this keep going? Like, when is this going to stop, you know? And so that's why, you know, for me, I'm not trying to end up in hell, you know, because like, if I think it's bad now, like, you know, hell is going to be a million times worse and it's just going to go on forever and there's no escape. So I know that, you know, if you hear that and if you really realize, if you really realize what that is, like you're, you would really make every effort to change. You know, Jesus talked about cutting off our hand if it causes you to sin. And so like, you know, yeah, there's some sacrifices that we have to make, but Eventually, God is going to bring us to a place where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, you know, full of joy. So, you know, it's just like Noah's time. You know, Noah, he was saved because he was righteous, but everybody else on the planet perished. And so are you Noah, you know? Are you a Noah in your life? Are you living right in the midst of people who are living wrong? Or are you just going along with them? Do you just give in to what they want and you don't try to make any changes in your life? Are you just making excuses like, oh, I'm a sinner, so that's it for me. You know, God is going to forgive me. No, like. You have to throw away your phones, like, you know, buy another phone, like put up, put up blockers on your phone. Like, don't just be so passive about it, you know, like do something like stop talking to certain people like, you know, uh, make a change in your life. Like, don't go to that same place again. You know, uh, if you have to move, you have to move. Like, you have to make those changes in order to really see change. So, anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something, uh, and I hope you thought this was useful. But, yeah, remember that the whole Bible is useful. It's not just the New Testament, you know. And if you find it kind of bland, if you find that you're not really interested in the Old Testament, Well, get a different translation, you know, and learn about the translation. Just because it sounds different, it doesn't mean that it's a lie or something. It's just the way that they translated it, you know, from the Greek or the the other language. You know, it's not like they're lying or anything. It's just you can use different words to describe something. So I, I recommend the New Living Translation, but there's other translations out there. But I definitely like KJV, you know, um, and I don't think it's a big issue, but, you know, no one talks like it when you practically think about it, like no one talks like KJV anymore. Like people used to talk like that. So that's why they got that translation. But today, like no one talks like that at all, you know, and so you might not be going to your Bible a lot because the translation And you might be like, oh, I don't want to listen to another translation because I don't want to be deceived. Well, you know, if you're not reading your Bible, then it's better to read a different translation than to not read another Bible at all. And and be like, oh, I only listen to KJV. So that's kind of my thoughts towards that. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you got something from it if you want more content 
please visit my website, washye.com. It's a blog. I just blog about different Bible topics. Um, and then there's a lot of good pastors out there. Uh, again, I just try to talk about different topics and give my opinion, but I'm not necessarily a Bible teacher. I just, I do, it does sometimes sound like that, but again, I, I come from the more of the standpoint of a blog of a, just a, a, a person who follows Christ, but you know, uh, I can tell others about the things that I know, but definitely you should connect with a good pastor or, uh, you know, uh, a good Bible teacher. And so, um, all right. I hope you found this helpful. Again, visit my website, washye.com for more info. You can also check out more videos on YouTube. I have cooking with the Bible, um, where I cook and also make, uh, and like put up Bible verses and have, have a discussion about the Bible while cooking. I'll try to make some new ones for that. Uh, and so, all right, have a great day. Bye.